The Stadio Lanfranchi in Parma, the venue for this Guinness Rainbow Cup game between Zebre and Munster, the final game for both clubs in this regular season, if you can call it a regular season. Not the conclusion we were hoping for, COVID has seen to that, but nonetheless an opportunity for players on both sides with international duty for some on the horizon. Here's a check on the sides, a blend of youth and experience in that front row for Zebre Lovotti, the experienced Nocera, the youth CC is back in the second row. Gian Rioli, keep an eye for him. Great ball carrier. Violi and Canna pull the strings for Zebre. Lucian and the young Mori in the centre. And speaking of young players, Jacopo Trulla at fullback, just 20 years of age, already a handful of international caps under his belt. As for Munster, settled enough looking side, Kilcoin, Scannell and Ryan in a powerful front row, Klein and Witcherly in that second row, Peter O'Mahony captains the side, Gavin Coombs at number eight in the absence of CJ Stander. Casey and Carberry, the present and the future of Munster at halfbacks, Scannell and Farrell in the centre, Coombs and Conway either side of Matt Gallagher. And the good news, the very, very good news, is to see up to a thousand supporters in the Stadio Lanfranchi this evening. The return of supporters to Stadia around the Pro 14 grounds outside, of course, of the UK, where they've been back for a couple of weeks in both Italy and in Ireland. You'll see it in the RDS a little later. Some supporters allowed back in, and what a great sight that is to see as Munster make their way out to the Stadio Lanfranchi. Alongside me, the former Connacht and Leinster player, the former Grenoble and Dragons coach Bernard Jackman. And Bernard, it's great to see faces in the crowd again. Yeah, it's brilliant and the players will definitely appreciate that. They'll want to um, buzz off the crowd and, and make sure they give them an entertaining game and the conditions look Look absolutely superb. Zebra, Zebra are a team who throw the ball around and, and Munster will be looking to get into the you know, their attacking side of the game, right? So I think we could hopefully have a, have a really entertaining high-scoring game here this evening. Yeah, absolutely. No pressure on either side. You speak of the conditions. 26 degrees in Parma right now. The sun is shining. There are some thunderstorms forecast for later in the evening. Andrea Piardi is the man in the middle. And Matteo Lipperini, the television match official, should and we probably will require him as the game proceeds. But we are just about set to go. We know that the Northern Hemisphere will be represented by Benetton Treviso in the final of the Rainbow Cup. Unfortunately, this game, for all intents and purposes, a dead rubber. Who Benetton will face when it'll either be the Bulls or the Sharks, and that will be decided in the Southern Hemisphere tomorrow at 5.15. Of course, we look forward to your company for that one. But right now at the Stadio Lanfranchi, it is Zebre and Carlo Canna who get us underway and Munster will receive the ball. Of course, shorn of some options in the squad. Johan van Graan after a nasty accident earlier in the week involving Damien Dialande and Snyman, and Stander and Haley, who all received various degrees of burns in a barbecue fire pit accident. And speaking of accidents, there's concern for Jacopo Lutrula that Zebra full back. I think Joey Carby could be in trouble here. There's a little bit of head contact um, just as he was coming down. Uh, he had definitely, uh, the player was falling, but there was a, a collision with his head. I, I'd imagine the, the TMO Li, Lipperini will be we were looking at that and just checking there's not foul play. He's a very exciting player, the, the Zebra fullback Trula. He just said, right, only 20 years of age, has been you know, part of the Italian squad, and uh, he looks to counterattack every opportunity he gets. And Munster will need to kick really smartly to him. That was a great kick from Greg Casey. The ball and, uh, arrived at the same time as the chase line, but um, if Munster kicked loosely, he'll certainly punish them. Yeah, seven international caps, and, and you feel if he was in another nation, he might have been protected a little bit from international rugby just yet. He had his moments during the Six Nations where it didn't go according to plan, but no doubt about the talent and the ability there, former Italian under 20. In fact, he was still qualified to play for that this season. Season. and he is okay to continue it would seem as Carlo Canna kicks and gives Zebre an early opportunity Luca Bigi 
And Zebrate, well, they like to use them all in these circumstances, but they can't get a hold of the ball to set that up. And it's with Renato Giamarioli who sets them going again. Violi, and now they're with Cana, and a little bit of movement around that fringe that gets them some go forward ball there for Violi again. And Cana plays it back inside. It's Krumov, the second row, who's playing alongside David Sisi. Krumov sets it up slow enough. Ball, Munster have their line set. Meet Zebra on that gain line. Kana, absolutely perfect conditions for the players, and they're off and running again. Zebra, this is good opening work for them, and taken by Bianchi. Blindside little gap opens up again for him, and Zebra almost there. Munster desperate defending, but there is a penalty, and mighty for relief for the men in red. Yeah, massive relief for Munster. They're under all kinds of pressure defensively there. Um, the connection into the defence isn't as good as, as they would want it. And Sebrae were getting their hands free in, in contact and, and getting that extra pass. And, and we're really motoring. It was just a poor option uh, from the ball carry there. He picked and went and went isolated. Uh, so, yeah, pretty slow start for Munster. Uh, you know, we know Michael Bradley likes his team to express themselves, play on their feet, and they have a good skill set. Um, but the set piece let him down. But just see there... Yeah, he just goes the wrong way and a uh, really good poach, I think, from Peter Mann in the end to help him survive. Or, no, no, it's gone. Yeah, really good work. And into the game has come number 23 for Zebra, who is Michelangelo Biondelli. As Trula gets a HIA assessment. Scannell, and that's for O'Mahony, and down for Casey and Munster get their first opportunity with ball in hand. Interesting to see how that back row of Coombs and O'Donoghue and O'Mahony go this evening. Casey already one really good kick. And here's another one this time for Conway to chase. Taken by Donofrio. He did well to set the ball back for Violi and Cana. And it's a composed enough start from Zebra. As Munster throw a little bit at them. Let's see what they can do. As Liam Coombs goes after them. Well, he was scythed down by Biondelli decent tackle Casey and it's back with Joey Carberry had a little look up to see what was on but Donofrio had looked for that kick to come and positioned himself well and winger just 22 years of age looks a little older than that it has to be said and that's a good relieving kick from the young man and it gives Zebra a decent field position yeah he had two really um, composed actions in that he took the high ball from the Craig Casey box kick and then you know he dealt with that tricky bounce from the Joey Carberry kick and just had the composure to take Andrew Conway on on, on the outside and, and get a good relieving kick so yeah definitely Zeb Zebra have, have looked composed at the start and, and Munster just trying to settle their way into the game and, and find a little bit of field position here's Niall Scannell and O'Mahony again the target Casey just got such a lovely crisp pass as Craig Casey joy to watch Munster trying to create as Andrew Conway comes around the corner ball presented for Casey again it'll pop on from Peter O'Mahony to set Munster up once more Scannell with the kick in behind and on a Frio again he was expecting that one to go into touch he ducks one way and then the other holds on to it and very composed again under a bit of pressure and Zebra happy to try and play their way out and it's created an opportunity maybe really good work for Zebra boot to ball again Donna Frio's after this Munster under a little bit of pressure this would be something special but to the rescue comes Gallagher to secure possession and he needed to because Munster found themselves on the receiving end of a great counter-attack from Zebra, really creative from the back three and Kana involved as well and Munster do enough to rescue the situation and get themselves possession once more and surely this one will be dispatched to touch by Casey and allow the Munster men a deep sigh of relief and a big intake of breath. Yeah, that typifies how Michael Bradley wants Zebra to play. He wants him to take risks. You see him here from their own 22. A little chip over the top from, from Canning. I think that they maybe did need to kick the second one. I thought they had a 3v2 and could have kept it in, in hand. But it is a good kick. It finds grass. And, they, you know, they force Munster to exit with a, with a good kick chase. But, yeah, they, they're so loose. And it can be really tricky if you're a little bit off defensively. Um, now, ill-discipline and their own defensive um, strength is a, is a issue for them. But they certainly can play. David Sisi receives the ball and 
Away they go once again. It's Lucien, Enrico Lucien in the center who tries to blast a hole in Kana. And that one looked like it might have been knocked forward, was it? Referee happy to let it continue. It's Gallagher who picks it up, dodges one or two and fires the ball downfield. And there's no one at home for Zebre. They were all up in an attacking line. Don Frio, he's seen an amount of the ball, hasn't he, in the opening six and a half minutes. And he's not tired of trying to find a way of running the ball back as Krumov goes in to clear it up in Kana. A little dink over the top of there, unleashing the full bag of tricks right now, Zebre, and asking all sorts of questions of Munster defensively. So far, they're up to the task. Ball brought back up to the halfway line, and possession is there for Casey. Dave Kilcoyne on one of those trademark barreling runs of his sets it up, and the penalty off their feet goes Zebre, and Munster have control of the ball and control of possession. Yeah, Carla Canna, he, as you said, he's trying to show all his box of tricks. He, yeah, it looked like it was a knock-on previously, but he actually just had a no-look kick and, and put it in behind. And, um, we just see here the Jacka player. He just goes onto his elbows first. Um, but yeah, Canna's trying to find space in that backfield. And in fairness to Zebre, they're, they're chasing everything down as if their life depends on him. Just there, it sees. Yeah. It's a, I thought that was a knock-on at yeah, first glance. It's it was really, really slick, nice. Really yeah. slick, because it draws up the defender on the outside. and um, Yeah, it, it's a nice bit of skill from him. He's a really talented player. He's obviously played a little bit of 12 for, for Italy as well. Um, and he suits Michael Bradley's uh, game plan. Uh, probably the, the thing that holds him back is, is his play kicking sometimes. He's, he's not quite at the, uh, at the same level as some of the other international kickers. But, uh, yeah, and, it, and, 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 and absolutely. And, and I think the issue with Kana as well is that he he can play right behind that pack and sit into the pocket and not feel comfortable and when he does that he can look apologies there just lost sound for a moment but Kana as I said he is he's one of those he can play unbelievably well and then the consistency isn't there yeah massively and he's he's probably so important for for Zebra and, and Italian rugby because they do lack you know mercurial players like him so I'm sure it's a massive challenge for uh, Crowley Kieran Crowley who's a new Italian coach and, and for Michael Bradley to bring that consistency to his game and, and if they do I mean he's going to be a key player for, for both teams going forward 16 Zebra players into Kieran Crowley's first training squad they will assemble on the 21st of June it's just domestic players for the moment there are a couple of players of course playing overseas for Italy yeah, you heard Johan van Graan in, in the pre-match or, or this week talking about 51st week of the year and in terms of being together and you nearly feel in some ways for the players who have to go and play international rugby um, you know obviously the test match is going to happen in, at the end of, or end of June and July I think the rest of the guys who aren't picked will be looking forward to the holiday they won't get a beach this year probably but just a little bit of a break and refresh Munster then with the opportunity inside Zebra territory. It's their first real foray into this sort of position. And Scannell has it at the back. Niall Scannell, that is, at the back of that Munster mall. And they were running out of room and changing direction. Casey gets a hold of it. And after it goes Mori. And the referee shrill blast of the whistle. And the penalty is there for Munster again. And they might take it quickly. They do take it quickly. And they head towards that line. And they're over. It was on. You could see the backs were turned by Zebre for just a moment. And in doing so, they offered Munster the opportunity to attack quickly. That they did. And the try is scored. And Munster are on the board. And it looks like it's Gavin Coombs who has come away with the try. We'll confirm that on the replay. But what is for sure is that Munster have the opening score. Yeah, and there's one man in Irish rugby this year, Munster rugby, or even Irish rugby this year, who you'd like to see five yards out having a go. It's Gavin Coombs. His ability in contact. In fairness, I think it's Casey just pops it to him, taps it, and just a little bit of footwork. And then from there, he's just so powerful. Uh, and, and even though there's three Zebra, Zebra players hanging out of him, he still gets it down. But he has had an unbelievable breakthrough season, really. And, and I mean, with CJ Stander obviously going home to, to retire, I think he's someone who's put his hand up to to be a real contender to take over from him and play eight, and um, he just gets over the gain line so, so frequently. Opening score then for Munster, and an opportunity for Carberry to add the additional two. And 
sweet it is over the conversion goes. Munster have the full seven and after a sprightly start from Zebra, Munster take control. Remember, Munster 16 times these sides have met and Munster never beaten by Zebra. Seven points to the good after 10 or so minutes. Yeah, Zebra, that's typical Zebra. They, you know, they play most of the rugby for the first 10 minutes, but Munster are the ones, you know, with, with the score on the board, and um, that'll help Munster settle down, give a little bit of confidence, and maybe put a little bit of doubt in Zebra's mind. Well, they talk about winning being a habit, losing is also a habit, and Zebra have lost their last eight matches. In fact, they haven't won since beating the Dragons back in February, and the last time they beat an Irish province, believe it or not, was Connacht. And that was over three years ago. So all the stats and all the form will tell you that this is a significant uphill task for the Italian outfit, of course, led by Michael Bradley, former Munster player, of course, former Ireland international, the Zebra coach, 40-odd caps for Ireland. Back in the late 80s, early 90s. And referee... Having a word with Zebra, they'll get the throw into this line out. Luca Bigi. Confirmation that Trilla's back and beyond Delhi. Well, the kick is easy to manage, and the mark called. Yeah, very lateral from Zebra there. There was never really going to create any overlap and eventually just kick a, a poor kick into the 22 as they found themselves running towards the touchline. But well, well covered by, by Gallagher, uh, but wasted opportunity for, for Zebra. That's a huge kick, but it doesn't find touch if that was the intention. Canna fires it down backfield and you can feel a bit of foot tennis coming on. Gallagher... Looks to probe it down the line, and that's a good kick. Trulla, not sure that he needed a deal with that, but decided to do so, and into touch it goes. Yeah, good kick, but disastrous uh, outcome for, for Zebre. Um, you know, he obviously made, look, seems to be a lot of sun, sun in his eye there, and maybe just lost track of, of, his, of his bearings. But to carry it out and give Munster uh, a line out deep into Zebre 22 is a, is a big error, and, and Munster looked to punish that. There's Niall Scannell, ready to throw to this Munster line-out. will take a step forward. O'Mahony is poised to be lifted. Instead, it's left for Jan Klein and Scannell. And now Carberry. And in midfield is Farrell. He's a big unit, difficult to put down. Gia Marioli goes low. Casey saw a little gap. He doesn't need a second invitation. And slips slightly to go to ground. Here's Niall Scannell as Munster build the momentum again and build the opportunity. Kill Coyne. And there was a knock forward there. Just as one of the Munster players, maybe it was Kill Coyne, or the carrier before him, went to pick and go just there. I swear, although it looks like it came off the foot, to be honest. Yeah, I think he's unlucky there. In fairness, really good tempo from, from Munster, using fire to get over the gain line, really good ball presentation. Zebra aren't really putting any heat on, at the breakdown, and, and Munster are playing off that quick ball, and you see Casey having little darts um, around the side as well, looking to find a, an opportunity to, to get his, maybe his hands free and put someone else into space. And uh, you know They made an error there, and, and, but I think if they keep playing at that tempo with those pick and goes, you know, they'll definitely get um, reward for him because Zebra's defence isn't isn't locked in around the rook. Clara Morini, the assistant referee on this near side. And the feed to this scrum will be for Violi. Am I right in saying this is the first scrum of the game, Bernard? Yeah, it sure is. And um, it'll be interesting. Munster have a, a very experienced front front five. Uh, front Four to front five are very experienced. They'll be looking to, to put a bit of squeeze on here and, and disrupt the quality of ball for, for Canna for the exit. Yeah, the Zebra front row, Luca Bigi, the Italian captain, Andrea Lovotti, 47 international caps, but the relative inexperience of Matteo Nociera, the 22-year-olds come through the under-20 system. He is the man who will come under the exam, you think. 
And he won't get the test because Munster free against them for an early engagement. Yeah, it's a fine line between you know being able to really get um, a good engagement, get your feet set, good body position to put that pressure on the ball comes in and and overdoing it and, and giving away a free kick. I mean, that's a such a soft exit for for Zebre. The only thing from Munster's point of view is they obviously get the line out throw, but they they will want to go after Zebre scrum. Uh, they just need to get on the right side of of the referee Piardi. Now Scannell once more. At the front it goes, and then to Casey and Carberry, who came onto it at pace as Munster looked to blast a hole in midfield. And quick ball there for Casey. Thought about one way, went the other instead. O'Mahony's the one who's asked to carry. Again, ground every time Munster have a ball in hand. They seem to be making a yard or two, and then the kick in behind it after it goes Conway, but it'll beat them all into touch on that far side. You could see what Munster were trying to do. The kick just on the wrong angle from Joey Carberry. Yeah, and again, really good work around the breakdown by Casey. Just try and watch how quickly he gets his feet in the right position to be able to move that ball. And, and first, Munster running a decoy runner off, off the off the rook as well, which is holding that Zebra defender. And then, um, you know, they've got good good ball players at the back like Carby who are looking to find holes. So promising attack for Munster. Long throw, always a risky option from Luca Bigi. It does give them the angle as it went to Giamarioli. And for a moment, Munster were onto it. Cannot will complete the exit and this one won't find touch so then an opportunity to Munster to run it from here and the lofted pass is there and it's now as Zebra trying to put a Munster foot in touch Klein is the one who carries it on and Craig Casey has the ball again now Joey Carberry through the hands once more Scannell and out wide a little bit of moment from Peter O'Mahony but to no avail nothing comes from that and back we'll go referee's whistle sounds yeah unfortunately for, for Munster the pass from Scanlon went forward uh, you can see Peter O'Mahony he plays out in the edge in the, in the shape they play he's often hugging that touchline to give them width um, and it just drifts forward but really good intent from Munster from that missed kick to touch from Canna Conway shifting it all the way across from the right touchline to the left touchline. They got good, good gains there, and it was on again. You know, if, if that ball doesn't go forward, you, you fancy Peter Manny to to get a really good gain line and, and Munster to be on the front foot. So that wide, wide strategy that Munster um, are looking to implement uh, is also looking like it'll pay dividends as Zebra are quite narrow defensively. A couple of bumps and bruises doesn't look like anything too significant. Although there is a bit of concern for Luca Bigi, Peter Manny back in his feet an opportunity for the players to take on some water on a very warm evening in Parma yeah it's just so good to see people in, in, in the stand I know there's a, a test crowd going to be in, um, in the RDS tonight. I think 1200 people and even though the season is, is wrapping up I think it gives us all a lot of hope that when we return um, you know, at the end of the summer we can hopefully start to to see bigger crowds and and get back to the the game as we know it in, in terms of you know the occasion and the, and the and the atmosphere in stadiums. Yeah, it's been particularly tough, and, and people have forgotten in all this the players playing in front of an empty stadium. We've been in them, and it is a soulless experience. And I know the professional players, and it's been fantastic that we've been able to continue to actually play. But the difference it must be for them performing in front of big empty cathedrals and but the thought of getting back to that normality is something to whet the appetite for next season here's hoping in the moment it's Violi and now it's Trula who will try and get them going Donofrio he's got pace and then the pass back inside and Trula holds on to it and flicks it again and the referee lets play go on as Zebre once again use their imagination, their creativity. And then it breaks down as Munster get in amongst them. And this is where it might get dangerous, but there's a knock forward. And, well, that was almost a piece of absolute magic from Zebre to create. And Munster scrambled back and dealt with it just. Yeah, they're more dangerous in their own 22 than they are anywhere else in the field. And, you know, really good intent. This is just uh, the end of it here. They just get completely, um, you know, lost in terms, of, in terms of their system and the ball goes to ground. But just this brilliant, you know, a breakout from their own 22. That pass inside, he just fumbles 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 and managed to catch it and then a beautiful offload from from the ground uh, in fairness Omani's worked really hard to get back Casey's back um, and from here this is where it goes wrong for them they needed to play 
close, short again, punch again, but the pass goes behind everybody and Munster get a chance to regather. But yeah, really promising for them. As I said, they're more dangerous from areas of the field where you expect them to exit and kick. Um, they like to exit by hand. Absolutely. Just lacking that composure when it broke down. And Munster are back. And the scrum is set and it'll be tell of Violi who will feed this Zebra scrum. Referee taking a close look at the binding and positioning on this near side. And Munster tried to get a shove on and Jim Arioli, well, he leaves it for Violi and Canna now has it. And the little show and holds on. And Munster eventually put him to ground through Jack O'Donoghue. And it's now Krumov, Scannell and... Farrell combined to put him down on Zebra go up to the Munster 22. Violi, Kana. This time they bring the other winger, Pia Bruno, into the game. Violi. Little pop off pass. Lucien has it, but again, it's just that Munster 22 that they've got to. But there's a Munster hand on the ground there, and it's O'Donoghue who's penalised, and the penalty goes to Zebra. Yeah, and again, good carrying uh, from from Zebre, um, playing on the gain line, you know, being strong in contact, and you just see Jack O'Donoghue here. The, the referee's argument is that the rook is already formed, and he just comes in probably slightly from the side as well. Um, yeah, so and also when when a team are when you're going backwards when you're on a back foot, the referee is always more likely to to, to penalise the defending side. So um, Jack doesn't agree with it, but I, I think in fairness, a justified penalty. Absolutely, and another opportunity for the water carriers to come on board. Some concern for Matteo Nocera. He'll prop forward, and he will be given the opportunity to receive the treatment. Looks like Severe are going to take a pot of goal here. It's been a long old season and a disrupted season for all these players as they watch on and Zebre look to reduce the arrears and the flags go up and Zebre have their first points of the game through the boot of Carlo Canna. That brings them up to 492 points in Pro 14 competition, three points on the night, Munster lead it by seven points to three. Yeah, I think it was the right decision to, to take the points there. They've they've showed plenty of intent, and you know it'll just help them settle it. There's a lot of inexperience in this team, and um, you know there's quite a few perma players who've come in come in during the year. Some of them are in the, in the squad, and Michael Bradley's role is is probably a lot about development as well. Um, and despite the fact that they were that they were stronger than Treviso early on in the year. Um, I think they are probably more of the development side and his job is to is to find young talent and nurture them for, for the national side. Violi and Kana, they don't want to kick from here. They've proven that in the opening 22 minutes, that's for sure. Lucien takes on and is put to ground by Gavin Coombs, try scorer if you're joining us late. Got the opening score of the game, the opening try for Munster after 10 minutes. Munster getting a five-meter penalty and Zebra just turning their backs for a moment Coombs took full advantage that's the try converted by Carberry you've just seen the penalty by Carlo Canna that's what has us at seven points to three in a game that's been pretty entertaining Zebra have tried to throw it around and unlock Munster from positions on the field you wouldn't normally expect Casey Carberry and is a big hit in there and it's not forward Carberry goes back, he's waiting for this one to try and cross the line, won't have the time to do that and gets the kick away. But again, Zebre find a way back into Munster territory. Yeah, great pressure from, from Zebre and if they can back up the you know the, the previous penalty from Canna with another score here, they'd be really happy with their, their resilience and, and how they reacted to that first try from Gavin Coombe. So the, first, the last time they had a line in this area, they, they did a triple movement and, and Peter Manny read it. I wonder whether he used something a little bit simpler here just to try and get possession even if it's more towards the front. Well, both Zebra and Benenden were guilty of being very readable uh, through the normal Pro 14 season. They got into these positions and there really was only one weapon, which was the mall. And as you say, there was a variation last time. Will they go back? No, they won't. It's going to go to Carlo Canna. And then in midfield, it's Lucian and it's not controlled. 
never on the ball. Well, never on the ball, says the referee. Never on the ball, you play. No, no, no. You're never on the ball. You're off feet and play the ball. It's different. That's yeah, I think it's lost in translation there. I mean, Niall Scan's looking at him when he said you're never on the ball when, uh, you know, he clearly did have the ball at the end. It's just, see, he's on the ball there. He's on the ball. Um, uh, yeah, that's a harsh decision yeah. on that replay. Yeah, he was. Uh, I think maybe the referee, to be fair, was, was, was blindsided by uh, one of the support players, but Niall Scanlon was on the ball from the very first moment there. Um, yeah, it's probably unlucky, but fair play to to Zebra, they you know they they got into that position, they got out of line out through really good kick chase, good pressure, and you know they secured the possession. And, and even though it was at the front, they just went towards the middle of the field. And you know once you do that, you're always more likely to to get a, a you know a decision at the breakdown. Kana converts his second penalty in the last three minutes, and all of a sudden it's just a one point game. Munster lead it by seven points to six. <laughs> Joey Carberry, as you can understand, in the heat of Parma, not in any great rush to get us underway again, just taking the moment to allow everybody to gather themselves and go once more. Up it goes. Zebra do a decent job of protecting the ball collector, who was Piotr Bruno. Lucera. And Zebra a couple of times have lost control of that monster. Farrell making an absolute nuisance of himself. User. But it's still there for Violi. Krumov. Tackle comes in from Dave Kilcoin. Munster not giving anything easy at that last couple of breakdowns. Really throwing the bodies in there, making life uncomfortable for Zebra. And that one was out on the full. Okay. That's a bad mistake from Zebre in that situation. Scrum half really has put his side under pressure unnecessarily. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know that'll go down on okay. the stat sheet as an unforced error from the from the nine, but in actual fact it is forced. It's Chris Farrell doing a hell of a job as the um, as the disruptor at the breakdown. We saw the ball pop out twice in the in the previous phase, and when that starts to happen, the nine just gets a little bit out, out of sorts, and you know you're on the back foot, you're feeling that pressure being knocked back, the ball not being secure, and that can affect then um, their kick exit, which we've just seen, and it's a big reward. So really good play by Chris Farrell. Can Munster capitalise from here? That's the 22, that's Casey and then Carberry and there's great pace in that attack. And the ball goes through all the sets of hands out to Andrew Conway and Conway steps back inside. The support is there and Munster edge ever closer to the Zebra line and they're going to get over, are they? Yes, they are. Casey with the try. Munster have their second and that all came for some slick passing. Conway back inside and then the numbers there were just too much for Zebra to manage. Yeah, we saw it earlier how narrow Zebra can be defensively, and Munster looked to get to wit, so well executed strike play. And once Conway gets in behind, I mean, he's someone that can make things happen. He's got great footwork, and I loved his awareness to be able to pop the ball fr from the ground. And it looked at one stage they were going to get over, but <laughs> just here, the scramble tackle, really good ball presentation. And in fairness, this is the one where Conway, if he, it looks like if he spins over his right shoulder, he scores. But Casey, as I said to you, he just his footwork around the rook is so good. It doesn't look like much, uh, but he's always in a perfect yeah, position to, to go to dive right or left. And, and that time he saw space on the, on the right hand side and, um, you know, gets the try. And, and, and Munster probably only, that's the third entry into the 22, I think. And, um, you know, two scores, two tries to, to, to show for it. Yeah, Andrew Conway so often is the catalyst for what Munster do well in attack. You know, he gets himself involved. He is on his game more often than not and makes a massive contribution. Step back inside there rather than going on the outside when he knew he wasn't going to get there. Munster arrive, the try is scored and Carberry with a terrific touchline conversion makes it the full 14. Zebra six, Munster 14, daylight again between the sides. Yeah, that's probably just a little bit of extra class Munster have is, is that when they need to score, you see that, yeah, that's great hands. Uh, you know, as I said, Zebra are narrow in defence because they're going to come 
up and in and shut it down but they don't really get uh, close enough to the ball carrier to, at the right time to force the pressure or to keep the ball inside the 15 and um, you know it's well executed by Munster uh, naive defence from, from Zebra but Munster's extra little bit of class just being able to convert opportunities um, into, into big points two seven pointers as opposed to six points for Zebra With the crispness to that Munster three-quarter line movement as well, that will please the coaching staff. Yeah, I think there has been real glimpses of, of the development of their attack um, this year. Probably not as much as uh, as they needed to, to, to get, but um, you know they're in the right place and they have you know they've found another nine in Casey. Joey's back. They've got three very good young tens. Um, one of them's on the bench today, Jake Flannery. So. Uh, you know, there's definitely promise there. It's just, I suppose, a team like Munster, you know, you're expecting them to be winning trophies and, and in, 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 the, in the final stage of Europe, and they probably fell a little bit off that this year. Violi and Carlo Canna try to spark Zebra back into action. It's there for the scrum half once more, and that one, well, it was ugly, what we call no that. Fiji tidies it up and gives a scrum half who hasn't had the best last five minutes or so another opportunity. Violi once more. Munster up quickly again. And every time that Zebra get the ball in that particular phase of play, Munster just knock them back and knock them back and knock them back. And Kilcoyne is the one that receives the congratulations. Yeah, it's just in fairness, really good pressure from Kilcoyne. Um, but that's where Zebra are really struggling. And that's to be honest part of the okay. reason why Bradley wants to play that okay, let's go, boys. offloading high risk game because when it becomes trench warfare um, they and they have to survive, you know, yeah. and they have to pound against teams that are defense that are defensively set they get knocked back and they make errors so um, there's a meta behind the madness and, and we just saw over those last couple of phases of what they're not suited to and that's what Munster need to, to try and make the game like that when when they're defending and obviously you know go after them from an attack point of view and attack those edges where you know we've seen a little bit of space yeah it's a really good point if it becomes trench warfare and we see it particularly in the winter away from home it's when they really struggle and they just do not have the ability to go toe to toe and they've had to come up with some creative plans and we've seen the positive side of that tonight still they trail and now trail quite significantly to Munster a couple of players requiring some attention Tiamo Bioli one of them number eight for Zebra the referee helping to clean up the medical kit will be set to go it'll be a scrum to Munster for that half forward from the tackle of Dave Kilcoyne the crowd is back and so is the DJ at Zebra It'd be nice to see Munster have a have a go here and, and try and get the ball into the into the wider challenge with a, with a, with a good strike play. And, you know, use likes of Chris Farrell as maybe a decoy uh, and, and put Haley or um, or Conway off his blind wing away. Decent scrum, just about control at the back, and then it is Conway and now Carberry and Farrell. And Carberry a little loop around and Coombs goes after this one, but it's Marshall all the way. Kana saw that one coming and did really well. Well read by the experienced out half. Yeah, but a nice play again. They're getting to the edge. They're bringing the wingers up and playing in behind. You see it here. Carberry, lovely little kick through. and Great chase from, from Coombs. And now they start with a, with a line out further up the field. So I have no problem with that. That ball stays in. It's a, it's a tricky ball to, to deal with. And, and, you know, the next best scenario is that they carry it out and you get the line out. Absolutely. Open. And here is Niall Scannell with that line out. Good clean ball for Casey. Carberry is skipped and he loops around as Munster go through the middle. Into the Zebra 22 now, Casey. Peter O'Mahony will climb on his shoulder and Ryan does the final bit of clear out work at that breakdown. Zebra trying to get some hands in there, but their hands on the ground, flare off their feet, and the penalty for Munster, Casey. 
keep your eye. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go early. It's Leah Vassa who singled out. He's off his feet there, already on his knees when he goes after that one. Yeah, yeah, he had a clear lift, so that, that was the problem, but it was just uh, the position of his of his lower body and whether he sustained his own body weight. Once you're going for the juggler here, they go into the corner, and why not? You know, they're more, and their line of catch troll part has been excellent. I think they're 100% so far, so they'll fancy their chances to, to put more pressure on Zebra and, and really, you know, get that third try and go chase that fourth try before half time, maybe. Okay. That's six metres short of the Zebra line as O'Mahony claims the ball and it's fed back to Scannell and Munster go about their work and the ball edges forward and Coombs joins to add his weight and the body position is good and he gets another yard or two. Casey is thinking about going and he's trying to wrestle it away from his pack and maybe he should have kept going but it's there for Carberry in good hands and out it goes from Gallagher but the pass isn't to hand and Munster retreat outside the 22 and Liam Coombs straightens up and goes again. Casey arrives and the pass is just knocked out of his hand but it's still there for Scandal and Munster continue to go forward after it goes Lucian but the referee awards the penalty to Munster again you are perfect sei perfetto il 9 deve rotolare prima però in in was it Lucian who's penalized yeah great pick up and, and carry there from from Scandal when the ball goes on the ground I think Casey just gets his hand tapped as he's passing the ball but look at that from Scandal off his toes and then gets really good leg drive um, and, and they forced the penalty. I felt sorry for the for Munster there. I thought the referee was putting pressure on Casey to play it while the ball was going forward. And even you know, if they had been allowed to keep it in, they would have. They're only a meter out when they had to play outside or play away. I think he probably, um, on reflection, he, he would have let them let them continue there. But again, you see Munster's hands just having that depth, and uh, you know, just the last pass caught them. If that ball goes to Coombs um, on the left wing, I think he, he scores. Gallagher just over 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 through a little bit and ends up bouncing on the ground. But uh, again, they're back on the other side of the pitch now, five yards out, and I think this mall has the, the potential to to score here and, and, and push Zebra over. Sorry, sorry. I, no, no. Stop. I get him. Okay? Referee, making sure the gap is there as he wants it. Farrell at the front of the Munster lineout. It goes and is claimed by Munster, and around the corner they go once more, and it's a result of a try. Over once more goes Coombs. It's his second, and Munster. Well, that was oh so easy. In fairness, if you want to save energy, what's the point having eight or nine fellas pushing, pushing when you can just give it to Coombs who can power over like that? So nice variation there, really good line out throw, and just a little back peel, and that's where he, you know, when he breaks that tackle, it, it's over. Good night, and you know, probably the softest try he's got at professional level, but it's because of his power in that first initial carry and be able to get his legs through contact um, yeah and, and a double for him already but you know again Munster's ability just to turn territory into, into points is very impressive absolutely and that will please the coaching staff Graham Roundtree looks on uh, the accuracy of the delivery to Coombs as well will have pleased them Coombs did great work but it was served up to him perfectly as Joey Carberry lines up an additional two way and up go the flags once more and Munster three tries three conversions gives them 21 points to Zebra six yeah we saw Graham Rantry in the crowd there obviously you know analyzing that line out and I think he deserves massive credit I think their pack um, have improved this year they're, they're better drilled you know their mall detail is good um, at times their, their scrum can be very um, very effective I think probably the next step for them is to be, be have better discipline, but uh, I think the pack are, are better okay. drilled, and he can definitely look back on this year, his year work with with satisfaction and, and, and more to go um, over the course of the offseason. Castillo comes in at scrum half for Violi, who frankly has had a pretty torrid opening half. And he's replaced. Use it! 
Craig Casey and Munster, you think, will be happy enough just to see out the remainder of this first half. Two minutes to go. And Casey will surely kick from here. Decent clearance soon. Zebra will get the throw of the line out, which will probably be the last action of a first half. And a first half where Zebra showed glimpses, but they've allowed Munster a couple of easy scores, and that gap is now significant. Yeah, it is, and, and you know you, you would expect more of the same in the second half. Even though the, the heat is obviously a factor, uh, Munster managing to control the pace of the game, and, and they just seem to have you know more clarity or, or more structure um, in, in, when they get down there, or maybe more confidence. It must be difficult for Zebrae after the, the period they've had to to really believe they can win this game. Absolutely, we haven't won since February. It feels like a long, long time ago. Luka Biji at the back of a mall that isn't really going anywhere, and. It's Casilio who is now in its scrum half, and Lucien, the ever working centre, takes it forward, but it's turned over. It was Coombs, I think, and Kilcoyne is off. He's eventually dragged down. Fantastic sight in rugby, watching Dave Kilcoyne with ball in hand, going straight at it. Good handling, it's with yeah. Farrell. And yeah, up to the 10 meter line, and Casey's advantage. screaming for it. But there's an advantage being played because it was being delayed coming back. But he's going to get on with it, and Casey's off already has one try, trying to get another. And it's, no it's Coombs who has no two with a little chip in behind. Number eights aren't supposed to do that. And back no. will come. There was an advantage. No, no, no. For me, it was just no con, it was on his feet. For me, it wasn't off his feet. We just see how quickly again he's looking to go. There's a penalty advantage, and, he, and he's gone. Force. Gets okay. that 10 meters. No con white. So one last scrum strike for for Munster to try and get that bonus um, before before half time. Okay. <laughs> No, for me, we'll so the last, uh, the last scrum we saw, yeah. last, sorry, the last scrum we and saw, Munster had the nudge on, and and they ended up playing out to out to the to the left wing to Coombs. Okay, so I think the ideal scenario here, you're, from a coaching point of view, here you're hoping Munster put the do the drive on, win the penalty, and then off the penalty advantage, you know, you go to the backs and, and try and score, but you know you come back to have the opportunity to kick to the corner. So it'll just be interesting um, if they manage to, to get the nudge on, get the penalty, and then go to the back line and have a free shot. Good. Crouch. Bye. Referee wants a reset. Both of you, okay? Reset. <laughs> I was going to say a big season in terms of the development of Craig okay. Casey as well, isn't it? Yeah, he's been excellent. And it's great to see him starting. I think we know he can give you tempo um, off the bench. He's a, he's a real impact player. But uh, I, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing him getting you know 60, 70 minutes regularly. And I've enjoyed watching him play. I think you know Andy Farrell saw his potential and, and gets capped for Ireland. Grants. He's been a very good under 20s player. Um, and yeah, I think you know with Conor Murray and himself and, and Rowan Osborne going down from Leinster, they're well set in that scrum half department. No question about that. It's at the feet of Coombs as Munster get a march on this scrum. And the advantage is there, and Coombs eventually is able to dig it out. And Carberry, little kick over the top, and Farrell's after this one, and the bounce goes his way, and then the offload, and Casey is there. It's a second try for Casey, it's a fourth try for Munster, and the perfect way to end the half. Yeah, they had the penalty advantage from the scrum, unfortunately. Uh, it just got dislodged a little bit at the back, so they couldn't play the, the probably preferred strike. But you know, Coombs gets the ball to Carberry, and he, I'm not sure if that was a pre plan, but if it wasn't, brilliant improvisation to chip it over the top where there's a big hole, and Far you know, gets the offload to, to Casey, so he is a double. We just see here, just gets there, go, lose control of it. It's a bad pass to Carberry off his left peg. You know, that's a beautiful chip into space, and uh. You know, Farrell reads it really well, and then Casey again just ducks him in inside the post. So, uh, you know, two tries for Craig Casey, two tries for Gavin Coombs, two young Munster players that have had big seasons. Yeah, and the amount of ground that Casey had to cover to get there and be in the right place to grasp that opportunity. You can see the ground that he had to make up as Farrell. It looked like he was going to get there really nice from 
Joey Carberry, wasn't it? Uh, improvising under a bit of pressure. And the referee just checking with the TMO that he was behind when Carberry, and that looks okay to me. Yeah, that looks yep, good. Twice then, yep. And over the conversion goes, so four tries, four conversions. Two from Coombs, two from Casey, the four conversions from Joey Carberry, two penalties from Carlo Canna. It means the half-time score at the Stadio Lonfranchi is Zebre 6, Munster 28. Waits the arrival of the two teams, half-time. It's Munster by 28 points to six in the final Friday of the regular season in the Rainbow Cup in the Pro 14 season. And of course, we still have that final to come. 19th of June next Saturday in Treviso. It'll be Benetton against either the Bulls or the Sharks. And they play tomorrow. Bulls, of course, advantage 20 points to the Sharks, 16 points in the table at the moment. If the Sharks can do it. Well, it'll be they who go on to take on Treviso next week, 19th of June for that one. Bulls and Sharks tomorrow, 5.15. In Parma, it's Munster in complete control, and there's a crowd back, and there's a bit of a summer festival feeling in Parma. Bernard Jackman alongside me, and Bernard Munster in complete control. And really, if you're a coach in this situation, it's a dead rubber, you're in control of the game. It must be very, very hard to say to your players or expect any more from your players in this second half, right? No, I, I don't think you can, but what I'd love to see Johan van Grand do is actually blood some of these bench players. Um, the likes of Liam O'Connor, Roman Salanoa, Tom O'Hearn, Jake Flannery. Get them on now, get them on after after five, ten minutes, give them 30 minutes. It's the last game of the season. I think Munster have no silverware to show for it, um, and I, I think they can use this they should use this half to, to give the next crop um, some valuable minutes because, you know, we know the result is done. We know what these frontliners can do. So that would be the, the only thing I would say that they can get out of it now um, is, to, is to use the, the time wisely for their bench. Let's see what happens as this second hand half unfolds and Munster immediately through a nice little bit of innovation at the restart, reclaim possession and Ryan will transfer to Carberry and a little dink over the top at Conway's after this one and that one, if it had bounced in his favour, well, he was favoured to get there, Andrew Conway. He just got away, and into touch it goes, and it's Zebra who'll have the throw. And you talk about the players on the Munster bench, yes, there's all that young talent in O'Connor and Ahern and Flannery in particular, but there's also a man on that bench, Billy Holland, who will surely come in and win his final cap, his 247th cap for Munster. More on okay. Billy Holland, hopefully, okay. as this half unfolds. Zebre take the risk again and execute again in a difficult position. And it's Giamarioli once more and Lucian on his shoulder. He's a real hard worker in the centre. With Lucian got a bit exposed there and there was a chance it could have been turned over, but Kana gets a hold of it and Munster find themselves from inside the Zebre 22 almost back to the halfway line. That was knocked out of the hands of Casilio, it's there for Carlo Canna, who looks for a hole back where he came from, and it's knocked forward, and Ryan is off, and he puts the shoulder down and gets more than his fair share of yards. Kilcoyne will be next up, and they're throwing the big guns now at this Zebra defence. Carberry, he's getting an armchair ride. Conway, little kick, probably not the right option. Lucian, but it's back and up for Rory Scannell. Munster get possession back all too easily. O'Mahony's playing scrum half, and it's knocked forward by Kilcoyne. Again, Casilio caught in possession, but will come back for the last infringement, which was a knock forward from a Munster player. It'll be a put into the scrum Zebra ball. Yes, yeah, it's kind of a bit chaotic there. It started off um, the start of the second half really, really quickly, like, like the first one did. And, then you know Munster put the foot on it and, and, and kind of got the game under control in terms of speed. But you know, you know, really risky exit from from Zebra from the line out. The ball nearly ends up at the first post. It's so wide. But you know, Leo, Leo Vaza makes a really good carry. You just see here, this is you know great block down. You know, but then he just loses on the ground and Munster get another shot at it. And, and that's probably what's so frustrating for for Zebra is that they end up having to 
defend back-to-back -back sets because of their own inability to, to take advantage of, of an error from the opposition. And that happened, that's happened all, all season for them, or the last couple of seasons, and you know, it, it must be really draining on them physically. Change at the start of the second half for Zebra. You see coming through, it's Samuel Ortiz is into the game, and it's Leonard Krumov who he replaces in the second row. Well, this Zebra scrum was in all sorts of trouble at the end of that first half in particular. It's a significant front row that Munster are able to put out in the shape of Ryan Scannell and Dave Kilcoyne. Crouch. Boy. Set. Feed from Casilio. Again, Munster looked to get the score on. Casilio makes the right decision to get it out of there quickly. Carlo Canna has his hands on the ball, and then it's out to Federico Mori. <laughs> Penalty, though, Munster's way. Yeah, excellent work at the breakdown by, by Liam Coombs. No. You just see it here on the replay. No, no low release. tackle, first man in, and gets that clear lift. So, giving the referee a really good. A good image and, and you know really strong at the breakdown there. So Farrell makes a tackle on the inside, chops. Yeah, and then Coombs just gets in there before he he wins the race before the first arrival from Teresa. Joey Carberry will probe the line. And then Munster will have the platform of the line out inside that 10 meter line. Good to see him back and fully fit and fully operational again after such a frustrating period you feel like he's played his way back in and the mind and body and any doubts that he might have had or any lingering concerns about the injuries fully fluid and he looks right on top of his game as this season comes to an end and he'll plow on now you would have called to the national side down from klein in case he had to readjust he'll be having a word of the second rope with that delivery but munster still have the ball scandal has a little look to see who's there and john ryan's off on another run of his and klein on his shoulder and munster are finding it all too easy to make yards. As I say, that Coombs is put back by a double tackle. Casey sort of got away from him, the ball, and he knocked it forward. There was a hand on it, and it was a difficult one for Casey. And all that coming from a lack of control from the line-out. Klein really wasn't hugely sympathetic line-out ball for a scrum half. No, no, they lost all momentum when, when the ball landed on the ground instead of in Casey's hands. And um, that's, you know, Klein is, is a really honest player, and he, he's aggressive, he's good at the breakdown. You know, he's apparently a very good tight tight head scrummager, but the, that's the area that he, he has to really improve on. It's just his handling and, and the subtlety of, of his hands. And you know, to be to be a real key player for Munster, he needs to bring that extra layer to his game because you know, big games are one on one opportunity to deliver quality ball off the top of the line out and, 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 and just there and, and, and I wouldn't, this season, I wouldn't mind seeing it again because I'm not sure we haven't put, or I haven't pointed the finger at the wrong guy. It may well have been Witcherly that that threw that down but we're not going to get a sense of the replay your points are still well made yeah yeah look uh, look at okay. he, he brings a lot it's just that that's the next what level where that was him or not there's been times this year when he, yeah. yeah when he's taken those short carries off nine where okay, he has knocked it on and um well, look at by all accounts he's a, he's a really good pro and he, he puts a huge amount of effort in so it may become a strength for him but at the moment it's probably just a, the only weakness in his game okay stay there No doubt Munster will try and get the squeeze on this Zebra scrum once again. Okay. Boys, 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 boys. Stability. Okay. No sidestep, both of you, please. Okay? Reset again. Bernard, as a player and a coach, you've been in, I know you won't like me asking you this, but you've been in circumstances where you're struggling scrum time. Is it something, it's really not something that can be fixed on the pitch during the game, is it? No, it, it's it, it's certainly not. Unless you had a very kind of crafty, you know, tight head or hooker, he might be able to pull um, something that just tricks the referee and you buy a penalty. But no, when you're outpowered, um, when you're outpowered, you're outpowered. And, and, and in fairness, you know, 
<laughs> Zebra now would be go. punished. So they don't even, you know, they don't get a reward from good defensive pressure, you know, which normally ends up with a with a scrum from a knock on, as, as happened there. And suddenly, you know, they're going to be five yards out probably and defending them all. Referee looking to the touchline. Uh, numbers 20 and 16 coming for Zebra. Number 20 is. Giovanni Legata, number 16, is the replacement hooker. Marco Manfredi, which means those two, Luca Bigi and Portulea Vassa, are the ones who will make way. Italian captain and the Samoan are done for today and for the club season. And it's an area of the game that the Italian teams have probably lost as a strength. I mean, back to you know when they came into the Six Nations first, you know the scrum was a big part of their of their being of their game. There's been there's a huge amount of Argentinian scrum coaches in in uh, in Italian club rugby, but they've really struggled to bring that to the international level now. The scrum is a weakness at international level, and certainly for Zeb Zebre, it's a it's a big weakness. Scannell at the back of the mall, which reshapes and repowers and continues on and on and over it's a walk-in in the end for the monster hooker Niall Scannell gets the try but the eight can take a bow and Zebra well they raise the white flag there yeah that was uh, really poor uh, you know you just defending in ones and twos too many guys out body position is too high and, and I mean uh, you know that's his great latch from Peter Manny but there's no need for it because there's no defender there's no defender in front of him and uh, yeah but I look at it, it's demoralizing to to give away penalties like that at, at scrum time and it was that was on their own ball as well you know it's it's obviously um, it should be able to get the ball in and out but they're, they're not even able to get the, the engagement part of it right and um, you know, it was it was pr pretty obvious Munster were going to score, but uh, at least they were putting a bit more resistance in the first half to those malls. It's a perfect four from four from the boots of Joey Carberry's in the first half, and this conversion attempt to make it five from five and give Munster a full seven again. Just clipped it over. Not a bother, and it is 35 points to Munster to Zebra 6. It seems like a long, long time ago that this was a one point game. Yeah, and, and I suppose from a Zebra point of view, they, they hope that they can stay some way competitive and, and maybe fire shoot shots, shots of their own because, you know, last game of the season, no one wants to be. You know, going off on, on your holidays, uh, you know, sh shipping 50, 60 points, and at the moment, that's the way it's looking. Lovati goes, Rimpelli comes in. And, you know, Rimpelli who had a baptism of fire. I remember it in the Stadio Olimpico in his first international game against France. He lasted about 25 minutes before he was called ashore. He comes in to replace Lovati. And Munster will get the penalty, and Casey. His own players must look at him sometimes and go, Craig, just stop for a second. Yeah, but I don't think you know, he's No, he can't. <laughs> he's just wonderful to watch. And he really is engaging. And Farrell will look to profit from his decision to go quickly. Coombs and Ben O'Donoghue. And now it's Klein. Casey Gavin Coombs again looking for his third try of the evening. That is some way to finish the season. Munster putting it through the hands. Zebra, who were aggressive in defence, just stand off and say to Munster, come on to us, which is always risky. And on this occasion, it's paid off. They've got the penalty. Kana is the man who turns it over. Now he's going quickly. There's an end of season feel to this one now. <laughs> No, 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 not ten. Yeah, and I, and I, I think Casey's right to. to that'll settle down. But I think Casey's right to tap and go, even though the Munster forwards might be saying, no, no, we're going to kick to the corner and we can put a squeeze on him. I mean, it's about actually finding um, the, the, the key elements of their attacking game, and they're only going to get get that by playing ball in hand and um, getting a chance to, to rep it in, in match intensity. So. You know, from a from a Stephen Larkin point of view, I, I think high ball and play for the next 30 minutes, and let's just see what the likes of Coombs and and Gallagher can do. You know, uh, um, with quality ball in hand and, and opportunities. Yeah. 
Marco Manfredi, the 23-year-old replacement hooker for Zebra, will step up and try yeah. and find his man. A rare opportunity in, well, close to the red zone for Zebra with ball in hand. Silio and then Kana. And Mori is there and he's in behind Munster and it's the last gas tackle that puts him to ground. He had great pace going and it's still momentum advantage to Zebra. Casilio eventually digs it out. Carlo Cana, little kick in behind. There are numbers there. Who's going to win the race? Casey is there, and the ball will beat them all. Yeah, great kick, great cover from Casey. A lovely strike play from from Zebre. Um, you know, they they found that mismatch and, and space in the in the Munster defence, which has looked pretty solid up to now. But again, she's not been able to exploit that line break and turn into points. Chris Farrell felt he had a, a good jackal attempt there, but that's from here. They just go out the back, nice chip over the top. Uh, but again, look at Casey, his awareness, he reads that body language you know, earlier than most fellas would, and he gets back. Carlo Cana finds to kick and creates the space. And it's Biondelli who's back into the game. He had a cameo in the first half when Trula went off for a HIA. He's back into the game now. We'll confirm who's gone in a moment. Luchin. Casilio complaining to the referee that the ball is delayed. Referee not interested. Carlo Cana pops it on Giamarioli and on it goes from Manfredi. And then Licata. And this is so much better. And Mori is almost there. And Carberry does so well to be the last man there to make the tackle because Zebre had again created. They show glimpses of absolute magic in attack. There is no getting away from that. <laughs> no, they're hard to defend against because they do take risks, and that's a lovely insight. Offload again, the one-handed offload. Uh, but there, that, that sums them up. I mean, two brilliant pieces of, of play. Vogliono controllare un potenziale leading with the elbow and forearm. Okay. Mezzo al campo sul numero 11. What so, numbers Undic? There is I was afraid you were gonna ask. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a leading arm, it's a captain's challenge. <laughs> so there will be a conversation with Matteo Liparini, Campo, the television match official. Master. And this is a captain's challenge, so. Let's see what comes of it. Okay, 17, non 16, va bene. Okay. Marco Manfredi, I think, is the man who's been singled out. Bye. Biondelli, Vimpelli. Hardly ending that there. That fine, yeah. And then it seems maybe it's here. Nope. Vediamo. Sì, sì, vediamo se hai altre immagini. Perfetto, sì. No. Okay. Rory might have felt that he. Yeah. Rory's obviously told the captain. From what I'm seeing, the forearm and and the elbow is close to the body. It's not leading, so it's not full play, in my view. I agree, Andre. Yeah, I mean, on the evidence of that, you can understand why the challenge was made, and you can also understand why the referee has said there's nothing there. Yeah, 100% the right decision. I mean, uh, there was no effort to, to lift it towards the throat. It was just an accidental um, collision, and Scanlon maybe just because he got, he got hit in the head. He's close to the body. He's not leading, so uh, you lost the captain challenge, okay? Yeah, it's fair enough. Good refereeing and good, good work with his team over there. Okay, time still off. One, two, three. Subs. Okay. Bye, thank you. One, two, three means John Ryan, Niles Scannell, Dave Kilcoyne okay. make way. And in will come Kevin O'Byrne, Roman Salanoa, and Liam O'Connor. Yeah, I think that's the right move. Um, they, they'll get 28 minutes. Um, and, you know, whether whether they, they go well or not, it doesn't matter. It's important to see them play and, and for them to have work-ons that they can use reference point over the, over the pre-season.
I knew you'd get a work on in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Roman lots, of learnings. lots of learnings for everybody. Ro right? Roman Salanoa, Hawaiian born, of course, did a spell through the Leinster Academy, transferred to Crunch. Munster. He's had his injury worries. That's he on this near side. Bye. 23 years of age, Liam O'Connor. Set. Has come through the system as well and big time in both their careers and the penalty immediately goes to Zebre and Casilio thought about taking it quickly and it's red 17 is Liam O'Connor who's penalised and Cannon not surprisingly goes to the corner yeah obviously the camera was on this side with, with Salano and he would have won a penalty because uh, his opposite man went down to, to his elbow straight away with the pressure really good body profile from, from him um, but unfortunately uh, the referee picked up Liam O'Connor for, for hinging on the other side so does ever get a chance to mull and, and, and let's see if they can do anything um, in this area Manfredi, and it's Leocata who claims the ball, and Zebra trying to work it around this near side and get back to the five metre line through Macero. Mole goes to Grand Castillo, and they're going to batter away at the line. And generally, when they batter away at the line, it's not there, as we've said. First choice because they don't have that ability for trench warfare. You feel like they're going to have to come up with a bit of creativity already. They've gone back a yard or two from where they started. Casilio once again. And Munster have that line set. It's O'Connor who makes the tackle. And Casilio goes once more. And Carberry almost picked it off. It's not forward. Referee happy. It's just that as Dono Frio tries to get away. We'll go back for the knockoff. Yeah, but again, it's that. Inability to win collisions, Royal. So they're, they're on the back foot. You know, they go to the back stand out of frustration, out of, out of lack of numbers, because the forwards will have to send some money into resource to rook, and that gives Joey Carberry, I think it is, t time to, to go and look for that intercept. Whereas, you know, you're on the front foot. You know, he, he doesn't take that gamble. Sure. Time off, time off. Okay. Thought about making a change no, no, in the front row, their final one. Zebra, that is. Okay. Okay. Time back on now. There is Roman Salano. Okay. Let's go, boys. Okay, let's go, boys. And O'Connor. Stay up, okay? Don't and eat. beside Kevin O'Byrne. Stay up. Okay, stay shoot. Crouch. Bye. Set. Casilio eventually gets to feed. Well, I said he's feeding but the referee front rows go down again if you had a blank page what would you do with scrums like this bernard would you instruct the referees to say oh, let's hear close to his arm okay better binding both of you okay let's go for, for the issue that we have around scrums yeah. what would you do if you had a blank sheet of paper what would you do leave them alone <laughs> and, and allow, and allow no, four uh, and five minutes no, to no, pass. No, no, no. Like no, no. Sorry, sorry. No, I want a okay, contest. I, wa go. I want a contest. So do we all. Uh, yeah, I think they can actually put a clock on the on the pre uh, pre engagement. Like, look at this. I mean, everyone has their process, and it's very detailed. Front rows, second rows, back rows. You know, but we waste so much time on that. If a ball, if there's a scrum collapse, you know, have a have a 25 second you know time limit where they need to get back in again. I think that could. That could improve it, but I want a contest. I don't want to see it depowered. Of course, I knew you'd say that. Away they go, and they have the opportunity maybe to get their first try of the evening through Licata. It was a great run from the band now playing number eight as Giamarioli has moved to the blind side, and they continue to pound away at the line. Stay back. They haven't been as close as this all evening. And an opportunity now, surely, to get their first try. They go to the back line, Cana and Onofrio. He's looked the most likely. Mori has had his opportunities, and now he gets over. And Zebre do have their first try of the evening. Uh, and in the end, it was well constructed and well delivered. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, and again, we saw, like, even 
they were a meter out they didn't really have the power to go over but that's excellent backline play and you know just that's the pass that's the killer pass um and the skill set canna is really important in the uh, in the build-up to it and a, and a great finish from Mori. yeah it's worth and you said it great pass that man giovanni donofrio on the wing he's got involved in a huge amount Mori in shot the one who crosses but dono frio we've seen him he's he's really got he's a decent skill set in attack and an he ability to himself. offload he's got the pace he's got it all yeah he, he's been excellent and uh, he's had such little good ball i mean we, you know we're we're remembering the, the two moments in the first half where he was doing great things in his own 22 but there we saw him closer to the opposition try line just the kind of damage he can do and it's great i think as well that they're they're using them not just on the edge they're, they're bringing him in a little bit closer to where he can he can bring other people into the game so he's a big find for them change in the front row as nocera goes and nicolo d'amico who makes his debut for zebra comes into the game and the conversion attempt to come casilio taking over the kicking duties way out wide we saw carberry land one from there earlier he can't so it's just the five it's zebra 11 monster 35. yeah look, as i said the result is is a, is a formality but it'd just be great for for Zeb for, for this game as a contest for for zebra to to stay in it and, and and play their part but also i suppose for them you know for for next season just to finish on some bit of a positive there he is, the new man, Nicolo De Amico. Makes his zebra bow on a warm evening in Parma. Final round of the Rainbow Cup. Not forward. And the referee says, not backwards by White. No, then he's changed his mind, or else it was another infringement. But whatever way it works, it's a scrum to zebra. That's a match perfect. Now there's a front row you want to see, Bernard. Yeah, I definitely want to see. It. And it's unfortunate it's the, it's the end end of the season, um, you know. But they they are the future, and, and Munster, particularly with James Cronin um, going as well. Like we know a lot, uh, you know, we know a lot about Kikoi, we know a lot about Stephen Archer, uh, John Ryan, and, and, I, and I think this season there's probably been opportunities missed, um, you know, to really fast track some of these young players. Some of them down to a little bit of injuries and niggles and things like that but I, I think you know they must have been very conservative and that's fine if you're winning trophies but you know this rainbow cup you know by losing the connaught they, they pretty much blew it and, and obviously i know the zebra game, or the benetton game was, was called off but you know it, it's great to see these young players because every young player for Munster has played this year has really impressed and showed they've got something to offer which is which is class for them going forward it's intercepted by coons he's away his cousin has two, he has one on the evening. And Munster of their sixth try. Try for Liam Coombs and Munster strike back immediately. Yeah, really good. So defense into attack and just see him here. Yeah, Maury, it's very, it's telegraphed. Uh, and Coombs, you know, he picks it off and, and, and wants that, you know, obviously months or Zebra are exiting, so there's no one in the backfield. But uh, yeah, lovely try for him and adds to the two his, his cousin has scored. As soon as he had it under control, he was always going to win the race. And there are going to be a couple of changes for Munster as they ready themselves to take this conversion. Out comes O'Donoghue and saw Jean Klein following him, which means Billy Holland is likely to have arrived on the scene. We'll just confirm that in a moment. Probably. Well, we'll see. I was going to say Chris Clotate, but we haven't seen him yet. In close yes. out wide, he's been absolutely accurate okay. tonight, says Joey Carberry. And he's at it again. That is another terrific conversion from way out wide. Yeah. And that will be his last act as well. He's been he's been excellent, and uh, I think Munster and the RFU deserve a lot of credit for how they managed his return to play. You know, they took the pressure off him. I think back in September and said, "Look, we're not giving you a deadline. You know, we're just going to let him come back." And 
since then they've, they've managed his game time really well and, and tonight he was, he was excellent he's always got an ability to run and, and sidestep but it's the other part of his game uh, tonight you know he's kicking off the, off the ground he's kicking out of hand and his ability to put people into space has been excellent and to touch goes and Jake Flannery is in for Joey Carberry alongside Craig Casey in that half-back partnership Flannery through the academy Shannon has played Gaelic games at the highest level as well is going through the under 19 and under 20s and a lot expected of him lots of promise yeah they've got you know three unbelievably good good tens with, with Jake Flannery Ben Healy who's had a big breakthrough season and, and Jack Crowley who does huge raps on as well um, but has had, had a few injuries. Didn't see Holland come in because it's Thomas O'Hearn who's come in Use it. to that second Stay row. And here's Chris Clote who comes in for O'Donoghue. Another three up. Claims it. And the penalty is Munsters. Bit of afters here. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's penalty one for Clote straight off the bench. That's a big part of his game. When when Munster box kick, you'll generally see him going straight for that jackal threat because obviously there's a lack of support for a second, and he, he's very effective. Another man wearing 19, Tom O'Hearn, that there's lots expected from. Let's listen to the referee. Pretty positive game until now. I don't want to see these again. Okay, so calm down. Speak, speak with, your, with your team, especially with him, okay? Calm down. Calm down, you two, okay? Please. Yeah, Tom O'Hearn's Tom Ahern's another another player that, um, you know, has, has really impressed any opportunity he got. And, you know, if the game opens up, if he gets any opportunity in space, he's got unreal speed for, for a, a guy 6'8 or 6'9. Well, okay. so Scannell, or I should say, Rory Scannell is, well, he says he hasn't, and he's absolutely convincing, I have to say, in his okay. argument that it didn't go straight out, but the officials are not interested. Munster are incensed, and the opportunity's gone. Let's see if this sheds any light on it. Uh, it's a hard, hard angle for us yeah. for there, but uh, yeah, the Munster players look incredulous that they were convinced it was it was in before the corner flag. Marius Mitrie, the very experienced the international referee, is the assistant on this near side, and he was well positioned, so we'll go with his call. Bye. Set. Salano is having a, a real ding dong here with Rimpelli. More stability, okay? Boys, more stability. There's a lot of movement, okay? Damn right, there's a lot of movement. <laughs> there's about 200 stone there. Yeah. The problem is that all the movements before the ball comes in uh, and I just struggling to, to get their body height right. But Elbow up, you too. Not like this, not like this. Hopefully, this time we'll get, a, go. we'll get a good contest and the ball will come in and away. Okay. Okay, don't move. Crouch. Boy. After all that, we get a free to Zebra. Uh, Casilio gets on with it quickly, and here's Carlo Cana, who loves these sort of situations. You can see him licking his lips as the monster defenders weren't set for him, and he finds some green grass to operate in it can I once more and that pass is one that Manfredi had to wait for and as he waited Conway got up to make the tackle Casilio finds himself back to where he started Zebra trying to straighten the line through the ever hard-working Giamarioli Canna steps back inside Clote and it's tackle from 
O'Connor that puts Zebre down, going to Frio, and there's a foot in touch from Mori, but again, those two look to combine. Yeah, again, positive play from, from Zebre, okay. just uh, run out of the room, but they are trying to, to go wide, wide, um, but whenever Cannon gets it, he just seems to have the ability to keep five the defenders nine. standing off him, and that's lovely hands. Number five and number nine. Mori. Well, that looks like it's his last act of the game. And there's got to be changes for Munster as well. See which leap is Casey making way. Which means Nick McCarthy will come in at scrub half for Craig Casey. Nick McCarthy on his way back to Leinster is his last game in the Munster Red. And uh, Finney Witcherly goes wearing five, okay. and in comes Billy Holland uh, no, it's line out. for okay. his final 12 minutes uh, as a professional rugby player. Okay. And what Let's a servant he's been out, to the game, out, to Munster. Uh, Made his debut back in 2007, 14 seasons with Munster, his 247th cap. Of course, he's a cap for Ireland as well okay. back in 2016 <laughs> against Canada. He, uh, well, he retires with full Munster military honours, doesn't he, Bernard? Oh, yeah, an absolute servant. And I, I just was doing a bit of research earlier. He, he won a... No, he's white. It's OK, he's says white. the referee. Coombs is going to get his hat-trick. So, for me... The referee so, yeah, let it go. It'll be know, reviewed. For me, the pass was fine, and he touched the, the white player. But the referee but says, right, well, you can hear him. Okay. Awful check, white player. I, check, I, check, I think okay. when they see it again, so, he might have to have another look. And we'll go back to Billy okay. Holland because this will be a moment that Gavin tried. Coombs may well My have scored his third try and a hat trick in the final game of the season. Not red, no con. But please have a look. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be okay. I, I think just, it is too. Yeah, it goes off the back of the zebra um, defender, and I, I don't see it hitting Coombs. We'll have a look here. Pass from McCarthy. And yeah. it was Flannery. And there. Is it off the back? Yeah, uh, it's the behind angle we need, but I think that looks okay. At first, Zebra, they all stopped. And Coombs played the whistle, just see here. So, That's pass is correct. No knock on by Red, yeah. because touch the white player. Try stands. Okay, perfect. Try okay. stands, it's the seventh try on the night for Munster. It's a hat-trick for Gavin Coombs. Yeah, in fairness to him, he, the, the play was to get the ball in his hands in the middle of the field. The, the Zebra defender tried to, to cut that out, but he, he got completely wrong side of the ball. He, he was unaware of where the ball was and hit him on the back. And all the Zebra players presumed it was a knock-on, but Coombs, he just played the whistle and, and, and put it down. So, yeah, a hat-trick for him, which is you know, a pretty, pretty good, good achievement. And Flannery gets the... The conversion, but we're talking about Billy Holland. I mean, he won the Arupa, which is the Players Union Award for Unsung Hero in 2013. Usually, you get that at the end of your career, and he managed to to get eight more years in a Munster jersey, and uh, and he, he got better with age. And uh, uh, yeah, he's been an unbelievable servant, and, and the legacy of for his legacy in Munster and his fathers, obviously Jerry Holland, is a famous Munster man. Um, you know, it's it's very strong, and, and hopefully has a enjoyable next stage of his career. There he is. Gets his hands on the ball. The Munster number 20 tonight is Peter O'Mahony. Uh, he's knocked that one forward. And into the final 10 minutes we go. Munster, seven tries, seven conversions. 49 points to 11. And they've been in control of this game since about 20 minutes in. Munster's trying to go to wit there now. You know, obviously trying to throw the shackles off, but... Um, just a little bit of poor handling, you know, gives forces the, the knock on and, and the error. But yeah, the seven minutes left, you'd like to see them really cut loose and, and try to play from a little bit deeper. Malcolm Alfredi, who's the man receiving attention for Zebra. Well, there wasn't an awful lot of stake when we started off and it's been a reasonably engaging game despite that. Zebra have had their moments, particularly in the opening 10-15 minutes when they tried to attack from everywhere, but as the game went on, Munster 
took more and more control and their power and their accuracy and their quality quite simply has been too much for Zebre. But the sun is shining, there are beers being had on a Friday night in Parma and there are people back in the stadium and that in itself is something to celebrate. Crouch. Bye. Set. Freed from Casilio. That one right on the line for Lucin to go after, and the tackle is made by Flannery, and the penalty against Munster. Hey, hey. <coughs> È la seconda volta. Calma, calma. Referee needs to get a hold of this one. You have a feeling it's, it's a just a over. moment away from boiling over, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, you know, it was a good. Well, they've done exactly the same as Munster did, except from a lot okay. more favourable position. So they butchered the opportunity. The assistant said straight out, he's 22 or scrum. Okay. Just when they had one good scrum and were able to get a bit of a launch play and, okay. and force a penalty, and then to, you know, it's demoralising for those forwards. You know, worked pretty hard nice to give them, 22. you know, give them a be punished for that. And I'm unsure they're looking about going for the scrum, are they? Okay. Yeah, so which could turn into a penalty. It's the previous scrums we've seen have all been zebra zebra put-ins. It's the first time with this new look front row that Munster have. Um, have to put in themselves and what they had been doing in the first half was going for that secondary drive um, and, and milking the penalty so let's see what these uh, these young guns can do okay let's go crouch bye Set. Munster under a little bit of pressure. Salanov, is that your read? Yeah, they they just um, they, they, well based on that they're not going to get any secondary drive. They just need to get the ball to to the back and, uh, and play. Um, it's just become a little bit disjointed in the in the second half. So there's definitely uh, well there's no sign so far that they're dominant. Great, my calls. Crouch. Bye. Set. Lucian. Casilio. Throw quickly, Manfredi had nowhere to go. Celio once more. Munster go after it. It's Clote who's latched on, and it's he who wins the penalty for Munster. Yeah, it's brilliant from him. It's his, it's his super strength, as they say. But look, if you're a ball carrier, you got to make him tackle you. you. You can't let him be. The inside, you have to run at him and get him off the ground because when he has the freedom to come in there as a, as a first arriver and he locks on, it's it's nearly impossible to to shift him. So and, and the way the breakdown rules have been for the last year and a bit, any lift at all um, should be rewarded, and and he certainly gets into those positions frequently. There's Billy Holland. A bit of salt in the beard these days. Towards the tail. And did O'Mahony get to it or did Zebra? Yes, it's there for Holland to play scrum half. Coombs runs into a really big tackle. McCarthy will dig it out to no burn. Looks to get going, but Giamarioli meets him. And there's nowhere to go. Holland's the decoy. 
Gannel. Oh, there's another big hit, a really big hit. Was it Manfredi that made it? Yeah, it was. It was massive. Oh, that's exactly what you want with four minutes left in the season. Munster trying to run it out from deep inside their own 22. And the offload finds its way to Andrew Conway. Sets it up, ball presented well. Salanoa. Take ball! McCarthy can see it, Munster in control of the ball again. Nicely done. Scannell again. McCarthy. Flannery, Salanoa, Holland, good hands. McCarthy finds the ball again, and it's there for Gallagher. Haven't seen an awful lot of him with the ball in hand, and he gets Clote away, and Peter O'Mahony throw well. Clote threw the pass, O'Mahony threw the look. Yeah, deck look, but really good build-up play up, uh, up until then. Uh, lovely offload here from Salanoa to, to Billy Holland. Flannery's attacking the line. Um, nice and flat, looking for dog legs. And, you know, that's the big hit. That, you know, that's oh. a man and ball tackle. You know, fair play, but the great thing from Munster point of view is they keep the ball, don't panic, and, yeah, just breaks down, just down the five-metre channel where... Yeah, and it's happened quite a bit this season. Just they, they, particularly with that forward holding the edge, they, they tend to overrun it or, or not to get their comms right. And, and you know, it's a big morale blow to, to a team when, when you when you carry the ball into touch or, or pass into touch like that. So that's something I think Larkin will, will need to improve on next year um, and be able to, to play that possession type rugby, but not risk risk you know giving teams soft turnovers you know on the, in the five minute challenge. Okay. The referee okay. encouraging the backroom staff from both sides to clear the area. Three minutes left in the game. Three minutes left in the Pro 14 season for Munster and Zebra. Don't close the gap, please. Freddy. Holland goes up but can't get his hands to it and Zebre look to finish with a flourish. Casilio. Ball doesn't go to hand. Conway happy to pick it up. Work from O'Connor. Coons having a look for it and he'll play scrum half. Salanoa on his shoulder. Hearn in to make sure the ball comes back on the monster side it's scrappy though but McCarthy caught in possession okay. but he wiggles his way and wriggles his way to make sure possession back and there's O'Mahony on the shoulder of Scannell or Scannell that is here's Coombs once more monster just probing and trying to find a weakness in that Zebra defense side. in the dying Most moments but there on isn't one and Zebra come away with the penalty yeah, that's the, the problem when you when you throw that inside pass like that. The, the first support has to come from the outside. I think it's Billy Holland just coming in from the side there, trying to secure the ball. But uh, um, yeah, if you throw the inside pass, there has to be a, a good enough gap that the ball carrier can get back in front of you again. So you've got a um, you know a clean out from coming in from behind, through the gate rather than a lateral one like that. But uh, look, I I think. Even though the game has got broken up a little bit, um, I still think it's good for these monster players to get game time and, um, and and whatever weaknesses they have to you know to, to know about it rather than just you know train really well and, and not be exposed. Okay. Final minutes as the sun starts to set in Parma and the darkness comes and Zebra have them all moving and Munster will not want to concede as their last act of this season. They have the advantage, Zebra, so it's a free play. They can do what they like. Manfredi Casilio trying to orchestrate something from here. It's the scrum half who takes the ball and cross field kick. And where's this one off to? It's off to touch, but we'll go back for the penalty. Don't get involved. 20. Stop. Eight. No, boys. No. 
You could see this coming. Hey. 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 Hopefully everyone just keeps calm now. Hey. There's 20 minutes left, three seconds left in the season. You know, the last thing you want is a red card or a sighting. Sure, and a suspension for the start of next year. Let's hear the referee. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's nothing clear. Calm down. You have you have an advantage for side entry. That's it. I blow the whistle. That's the end of the story. Okay, guys. Clock still going. Last minute. Last play. Sorry. Okay. It's penalty. 18 from the side. And this will be the last play of the game, and it'll be Zebra's. Discipline, please. Okay. Of course, of course. Right to the dying moments, to the dying embers. Peter O'Mahony as the game face. Zebra. As you would expect. Disciplina. David. Yeah, it's been a full blooded contest, hasn't it? Sure um, has. Yeah, oh, <laughs> both teams are up for it. It's not, it's not like an end of season game when, when, when nothing could play for months or want out and wanted that bonus point. And Zebra have played their part too. Oh, it's back for Manfredi. Not clean ball though, so they're retreating from the outset. And Lucian tries to get a bit of momentum going forward. And it's Billy Holland who turns it over and makes sure Munster have the ball. Is there one last try? to get them over the 50-point barrier before the season ends. Back inside from Holland to Salano. No, both there, both there, both there. Coombs, three tries already, and that one is forward, and that so forward. will be that. Okay. Time off. Time off, boys. Referee just it's checking it's check, okay? with the TMO. The TMO is checking something, okay? So I blow the whistle for a, for a forward pass. Time is off. Now. Not quite sure yeah. what the TMO was seen. Is it? Marius. Matteo. Sharp blast of the whistle is what I think is in need right now. Yeah, yeah, wait. Yeah. From a technical point of view, it could be the argument is he's, he, Billy Holland has taken the nine here, which you know could be a penalty, but it's not. I, I didn't hear a captain's challenge. It doesn't look like there's any foul play, and the rook's over actually. The ball's out, so he's tried to come in or knock on. He gets so Billy Holland forward, maybe. Yeah, yeah but it's not going to no. impact on that. No, there's no foul play. More like see. Okay, okay, okay. I'll explain. I was wrong. For me, it was he picked up the ball, but I was wrong, and we played a uh, penalty for play the nine. Okay. Playing the nine okay. is the decision, as you suggested it might yeah, be. Yeah, I, I thought the look was over, but uh, I, I don't think there was a wait, captain's challenge, so I don't know if the TMO can. I think the play TMO the did call. Yeah, but he shouldn't. He, yeah, he shouldn't if it's not. Look, it doesn't matter. We're going to get another another minute or two. Well, they'll get another chance. The previous one, it was great defensive pressure from Peter Manny, which he got up in the air in, in the right area. He read it well, and, and he forced the ball to be tapped back. Obviously, Zebra would have preferred to catch and drive there and, and suck in the, the monster forward. So it'd be interesting if he can work his magic again here and, and get some air pressure. Discipline. Boys, boys, ten. More. Ball is claimed, Lukata had it, and the ball is formed, and they try to come around the front once again. It's not the first time they've tried it, and they've got a sense that they might be able to get there. So Tisu has it. Well, he did have it, and it's now been shuffled back at Giamarioli, who looks like he's in control of it, and Munster no, 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 no. send them towards the touchline, but the ball is still in play. Still a little bit of work to be done. Zebra, CC. Well, that ball is surely out, and it is, says the referee. And Munster go after it, and Clote 
wins the penalty and Munster have the ball. And surely this one will be dispatched to touch and an end will be brought to the season. Yeah, and for Zebra, it's that typifies where they're weak. They just, you know, don't have the, the power to to put themselves, to take advantage of those type of positions and just get bullied, bullied up front. Well, they've been given the decision to keep going. Cole came, I presume it was from O'Mahony, into Flannery. Get as much out of it as you can. And Munster want a little bit more. Holland down for McCarthy and they attack the line through Scannell and that pass was floated out to Coombs who did well to gather it and then from Conway to Gallagher. Ahern goes in and does the required work to make sure the ball is back for Munster once again. They want to finish with a flourish and they're going about it the right way. Ball has popped up for O'Byrne, that may have been forward, the referee can, says continue on. On the replacement, Hooker goes, is he into touch? He is into touch, but there's a penalty. Monsters again, it's the never-ending game. <laughs> I think it's a no-arms tackle on O'Byrne there. Greedy, good pass from far, look at one-handed offload. Burned as well. Thought about giving inside, no, no, yeah, he could give an inside pass. <laughs> he turned himself into a speed bump. <laughs> he's had a good year, in fair. He, he's, he's been impressive to me, uh, for no. me. He's, he's no. quite dynamic, very comfortable on the ball. Yeah, Don Ofrio is going to the sin bin for that no arms tackle. I mean, he really did. He just knelt down and tried to turn himself into a speed bump to stop Kevin O'Byrne from getting there. Okay. Shouldn't laugh. Time into off. the corner it goes. Man down, time off. And Munster, well, they were no, down no, on their no, own no, line, no, and no, now they're going to get an opportunity to finish okay, okay. by breaking the 50 but points barrier. Some real concern you, there from Daniela okay. Rimpelli. If there is a kick, he's in the middle. No, no, ferma. In mezzo al campo. Yeah, I think Zeb, a lot of the Zebra players are out in the feast. I mean, um, Munster, you know, Munster have picked up the pace of the game um, in, in the second half, and you know, have played a lot more possession type rugby. Even though it hasn't led to tries directly, it's, it's sapped the energy of of Zebra and to have to go into the 85th minute now and defend a, a line on their own line. Um, it's difficult for them. Not a nice way to finish the season for Rimpelli, who spent the next couple of weeks in rehab by the looks of that. So what odds Billy Holland crashing over? for the final try of Munster's season. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great, great for him. Um, I'm sure I'm sure he's got massive mixed emotions about giving up a game that's been such a part of his life for the last 14 years, and um, it will be fitting, uh, but... Oh, no. Munster have the ball, they're three metres short. Here goes Coombs again! Four. It's his fourth try of the evening. Munster have the final say. 85 minutes on the clock, and the game that never ends is going to come to its conclusion with this fourth try yeah, from Gavin fairness, Coombs. Very well done by him. I mean, the, the put down is easy, but what he spotted was that there was a space on the blind side, and he took back in under behind the rook. Um, good pass from Kevin O'Byrne, and, and the score, you know, four tries is, is phenomenal. But he has been, you know, he's been excellent all night. And once he gets in within five meters of the uh, of the opposition try line, doesn't matter if it's against Toulouse or Zeb Zebre, um, he's a formidable guy to try and stop. And look who's taking the conversion, Billy Holland, with the final act. <laughs> and a conversion taken like you'd expect it to be taken from most second rows. That is that. It's done. 
in Parma, the end of Munster's season, the end of Billy Holland's professional career, and Munster have romped a victory. Zebra 11, Munster 54. The Rainbow Nations Cup player of the match, mate, fantastic game, fantastic first half, which I thought you could try really well yourself. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, conditions were not well. We expected it, but it wasn't as easy as we thought it would be. Uh, 28 degrees heat takes it out of you. But I thought Zebra came at us well. Uh, but I think we managed the, the first half well and ended it well as well. So uh, it was a tough game. Uh, it was a weird, weird finish to the season. Not what we wanted. Uh, obviously, we would have wanted to be in the final next week and try and get silverware. But uh, look, we'll try and go again next season. It's not what we wanted. Sure. And the season, a, a basic. Um Outline of the season, you know, how was it in general? You know, it's obviously said it was difficult, but yeah, you know, there was uh, highs and lows. And yeah, obviously a lot of lows because we didn't win trophies, but mm. um, I think it was a good season. Uh, a lot of games played, uh, that was good to get a lot of games under the belt, but obviously we didn't finish with trophies, so and that's what we want. So, uh, not a, not a great season, all right, but look. Right, nice on a personal note, no, nice to get two meat pies. Well, congratulations. Thanks very much. I don't think Rory Scannell will be too happy with the, <laughs> with the second, uh, and I think Gav will be a bit hurt that he's not man of the match, but uh, thanks very much. Real Cheers. Right. Congratulations. Cheers, Cheers bro. Peter Mahoney, the Munster captain, mate. A tough, a tough win, but uh, obviously the first half dominated basically the game. I think he's, he's laid the platform and, and really set the, the platform for the second half. Yeah, I think so. I think look, I think it showed our respect for, for Zebra and, and the way they play, um, how passionate they are at home. We knew you know, we had to be good in the first half and, um, you know, to be fair, I think our, our set piece was, was clinical mm. and, um, you know, it's, as you said, it set the platform for, for the rest of the game, certainly. Also, getting to the red zone, you know, to the, the, the point scoring zone, the variation of what you have from the driving line out to the pop ball to, to all that stuff, I think, it put the Zimmer a lot of pressure. That's something you obviously worked through the, through the season as well, but something that today was identified a bit more? Yeah, look, it, it's, it's something that we've grown our game. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's about scoring points at the end of the day and, you know, we've worked hard on, you know, when we get into opposition 22s to, to convert is a thing. You know, you, you get opportunities, but converting them is a thing. And, you know, today we were able to be able to put some scores on the board. Season in general, mate? Um, look, it makes bag, you know, we're, 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 we're winning lots of games, but, you know, we, we've lost some, some, some important games that we need to take a step to, to getting closer to, to winning trophies. And, um, you know, that's where that club, this club belongs. And hopefully we can, um, you know, take another step or two next year and, and kick on. But, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't fault the lads. You know, the effort this year has been, has been incredible. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure to play alongside them all, particularly the young guys that have come through. They've given a real, you know, boost to the club and 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 the older fellas as well. So it's been really enjoyable. But, you know, we've another big one next year. You talk about the young fellas as well, mate. There's a couple of stalwarts leaving as well. It's a tough yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, we're losing a lot of caps uh, after tonight. Um, couple of good friends as well so look it's 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 nice to be able to send them off the way we did there um unfortunately we, we could we couldn't get another one but you know it, it's uh it's it's nice to give them a send off and even the guys who weren't here you know who would have loved to have played tonight um you know it was important for us to to to, to play well for them as well um they've given so much to the club you know the, the seven or eight guys i'm not going to name them all tonight they know who they are but very important to to the club and and have given a huge amount so it was nice to to give us a send off tonight. Peter, I'm home. Thank you very much, mate. Enjoy your beer and safe flight Cheers. time. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Exactly. We're here with uh, the captain of the Zebras, David Sisi. Mate, a tough day at the office. Um, what didn't happen? What was. Uh, it's a game that probably summed up our season, if we're honest with ourselves. Mm. It's loads of effort. Loads of effort from a young group as well. And we're going into next year with a young group, but. At this level against a top European side like Munster, it's not good enough, just effort, you know. I actually think we, we created some good opportunities in the first 20 minutes. I asked for a big start from the team and I thought, I thought that went pretty well, you know, against, as I said, against a strong Munster side. But ultimately, as, as, as the game goes on, we made more and more errors and they came more and more into the game. Initially, our drive defence was good and then they got on top of us as the game went on. So a bit disappointed, really, a bit disappointed. Uh, gutted we didn't take the chances that we created. Again, it's the story of our season. We create a lot of opportunities, but we don't finish them. So a lot to work on for next year for sure like you said as well mate there's, there's been a lot of young guys come through this year and really stood up you know you've got a really young pack yeah, uh, yeah. And you've got some exciting backs as well you know what is the the future you know what is next season for, Look, for this club's got an exciting future i mean i've got a shout out notche today against uh, as i say a top european yeah. pack notche has done a great job in the scrum for us there the, uh, tight head prop pierre jam jam uh, jam uh, jam Arioli. those boys have had fantastic seasons for us yeah. 
fantastic seasons for us. So there's positives. I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves. It's another season at the bottom of the table when this club is better than that. And we play an exciting brand of rugby and we expect to score points. So when we don't take the opportunities that we create, it's frustrating. So, look, it's been a frustrating end to the season for us, but we rest. We come into a pre-season. We're in desperate need of a good pre-season together. And we hope this time next year, we don't hope, we work hard to make sure that the things stick next year. Mate, on behalf of myself and Dad Zon, it's been a pleasure to watch you guys play, mate. And enjoy your, your month off Thanks, and uh, we'll see you next season. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, bro. Cheers.